Hello everyone and welcome back to another tutorial. In this video we're going to be looking at pivot tables and more specifically how we can uh, use the sum, average and count functions within the pivot table to give us uh, the desired summaries we need without having to do any complicated uh, calculations or just having to add anything extra to our data. So we've got a basic data set we're going to be using and we've used this one previously. Uh, simply it was just downloaded from uh, a website that is particularly good at providing some sample data. Uh, so again obviously on that note this is sample data there is um, no personal information uh, being used in this, it's all randomly generated. So, as with all of our data, if there is any uh, coincidence where uh, da data does look genuine, I can assure you it's not, it's just randomly generated and it'll just be just by chance. So, what I'll do is put a link to the website in the description to this video. So, if you want to download that data yourself, you can do. So, what we're going to do is first we've put our pivot table in. Uh, so, if you're not sure on how to insert a pivot table, you can check one of our previous videos around pivot tables that will show you everything you need from start to finish. What we are going to do is we're just going to simply use uh, the region section or the region data point, shall I say. So we've got central, east and west. And then we're going to just bring in the total. And total for us is just what the sales total is. And you can see by default, it's just going to give us that uh, sum of total. So if you wanted to have uh, your total sales uh, by uh, obviously by region, all you need to do is drag it in and you can see clearly just by down the right hand side here, you can see it's summarizing by the sum of total. But let's say you wanted to do a count so you can see the total number of sales uh, that you had in Central using just this total field. Or maybe you want to look at what the average sale was just by using again this field. So what we can do is we can just bring, well, we can either use the same field or we can bring that field in multiple times uh, to derive each of these uh, circumstances. And that's exactly what I'll do. So I'm just going to just drag total back down here again and once more. So you can see we've got three iterations of the sum of total. And at the moment they're showing uh, the same for each. So let's say in this first one, we actually want that to be uh, the count, the number of sales. So it's just going to literally count the sales total uh, for each uh, by region. So all we need to do is if we go into our information button and you can see that at the moment it pops up and we can see summarize by uh, and it might depend on the version you're using. I'm actually even using uh, Microsoft, X, uh, Microsoft Excel on a Mac uh, today, uh, but you'll get exactly the same view. Well, the, the principle will be exactly the same, although the view might be slightly different. And you can see at the moment, you can see some has been selected underneath this section of summarize by. So all we're going to do here to get our count is simply go into count, select OK, and you can now see in the bottom right hand corner, it's been updated to show count of total. And you can see us back in, in column B here, it's now been changed to count of total. And you can now see the total number of sales uh, by region. So Central had 24, East had 13 and West had 6. Going on to the next one, all we need to do is if we go back into our information button, but this time for the second instance we have of the sum of total. And this time we'll go into average, so we can go OK. And you can see as quickly and easy as that, it changes everything to average, so we can now see what the average uh, sale value was. And, uh, well, OK, it's like, I was then going to say it's not very different at all, but yeah, between Central and West, you can see there's not a great difference in the average sale, but they are both quite a bit higher than the West, um, obviously by about, uh, trying to do some quick maths here, about 40, uh, just less than 40 pounds. Uh, so what we can do with this one as well is we'll just quickly change our formatting so we can do that simply by going to our information button once more and this time we'll go into the number section and we'll just select currency and we'll get rid of the two decimal places and go OK, OK again and I'll just do that one more time for our sales total just so it tidies it up a bit. And once again, if you're not familiar with how to do this, and I may be rushing through this quite quickly at the moment, uh, all you need to do is go and check out our previous videos that go into a lot more depth on how to do the formatting and pivot tables. And you can see that just makes it look a bit better in our table uh, for obviously reading when we're talking about pounds and currency rather than actual numbers. So we've now managed to get what we achieved. We wanted our count, so we can see the total number of sales per region. We can get the average sale, so we can see that that's fine. And we can then get our sum of, uh, or say our sum of our sales, um, so the overall total sales sold. And this is particularly useful bringing these additional columns in, or so I say fields, because it allows us to actually understand the data a bit more. Because we can actually see that obviously here in West, 
uh, it's the, basically the reason it's obviously a lot lower than um, Central is simply because the sales volume. There's a lot more sales uh, in Central than there were in West, especially when we know that the average sales was about the same. So everyone is selling about the same average sale per transaction. It's just that Central is doing obviously a heck of a lot more sales than West is. And obviously this is not the limit. You can take this a bit further. So if you wanted to bring total in one more time, uh, you can then have these options of doing max and min. So we can go into the information one more time and you can actually see these are all the options that you have. You've probably seen it on the screen already, but just to uh, touch on it, you can see there's many other options that you have when using um, uh, the, the options available in pivot tables when you want to summarize. And the other one you can do is just go into max or min. I'll select max for this instance. And you can now see the max sale that was uh, achieved in the data. And this basically means this is the largest sales transaction that happened. Obviously, it was probably made up of maybe uh, multiple different items. But ultimately, this is the largest transaction within this um, overall total. So you can see overall, there was 24 uh, sales, but the largest of those sales was accounted for over 10%, uh, obviously more like 15% of the overall total. Uh, and once again, we'll just change the formatting of that, go back into number, just so we're back into currency so it all looks familiar. And uh, it wasn't the purpose of this video, but again, you've probably now got a bit more insight and you're probably an expert in going through and changing the uh, the formatting for the values within your pivot tables. So although a quite quick uh, video, we hope this was a great like to the point example of um, what you can do in pivot tables, uh, especially if um, you're trying to work with your counts, averages and sums. Uh, this is a question we regularly get um, of obviously, what can we do to make this easier? Uh, and especially you might not want to be using a pivot table for your summary. You might literally just want to use it to obtain a value, i.e. like the averages per each region. If you're going to a meeting, it's a number that you can quickly reference. So again, this is another use for them. So you don't have to use pivot tables just for when you're presenting. They're also particularly useful just to have in your back pocket if you quickly need to analyze your data and obtain some values. So if you haven't already, please do uh, subscribe to the channel. Um, we've got a lot more videos that are coming out going into more depth with other formulas and functions and also We'll continue to look at pivot tables and allow you to understand the, the benefits and the additional tricks that are available with them. If you haven't again already, uh, sorry I've said that twice now, uh, do give the video a like. It, it not only uh, allows us to see which uh, what content you like and would like to see more of, it's obviously also very beneficial for the channel as well. So thank you very much for watching and we shall see you in the next video. Before you go, don't forget to check out the other videos on our channel. You'll see everything from other functions and formulas through to tips and tricks. We've also created some playlists so you can see these categorized together. So make sure you check those out uh, and get all those useful information. And obviously, as always, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell notification button.